Bam. That's all. That was something. Well, you know, if the mortar fighters have to join the close combat of the enemy infantry, then something is wrong. That's all. We are like postmen, so to speak, and we need to send this message to the addresses. Yes, addresses. And from whom? From everyone. From everyone, yes. It is very important to understand this when you go into artillery, that you will lose your hearing 100% and so on. Back. Yes, it will hurt, but you need to perform a combat task, so you have to accept it and endure it. You can't smoke near gunpowder. Yes, near a gun. We cover ourselves. Well, and guns in such a scheme are only God's protection, that's all. I apologize. That's all. What are you saying? <laughs> Minus, well, a person, a person needs, well, if in a simple war, well, he has to count to a hundred, and we have already learned the other. Yes, at least to a hundred. Probably, in order to become an artilleryman, you need to know arithmetic in general. An artillery site has 60 large divisions. In each division, there are 100 small units. Therefore, the site can be 35, 64, and when they give a correction, plus 20 or more precisely square meters, plus 20 by square meters, or plus 23, a person simply needs to be able to calculate quickly and to be certainly physically strong. Because you yourself understand, this is artillery, mines weigh 16 kilograms, mortar weighs 275 kilograms, that is, we can perform our work as a team. A person should also have the ability to work as a team to be part of this mechanism. You know calculations are not even a team, but a mini-family. This is the family you trust, you should be sure. When you spend all the time together, you understand who is breathing what, who thinks what. That is, you get used to each other, and also, so to speak, we get used to each other's characters, so that we understand who is in what situation, how to behave. Well, look, in the calculation of a mortar, there are usually five people. That is, this is the commander of the calculation. The commander of the calculation in our mortar battery is also a calculator, a bussins or a topologist. That is, he needs to be able to do everything. And when I came to the mortar calculation, I was the easiest one at first. The easiest thing is the charger. The charger is responsible only for throwing the mine into the barrel channel. It also requires skill, that is, so that the mortar does not move from place, because there will be a 30 to 40 meter difference, that is, it will be necessary to spend ammunition on the target. The next line is the equipment. In my opinion, this is the most important person in the calculation because he is responsible for the ammunition, for the readiness of the ammunition to work, and the equipment of the ammunition. The next line is a pair. A pair of two guides. The first guide is responsible for guiding the mortar. The second guide is responsible for the levels that are on the mortar site. This is how the calculation is built. Well, this is the same thing. There are four or six on the machine guns. Depending on the machine gun, for example, on Poisson, there are five people. This is a driver mechanic, this is a person who is fully responsible for the working state of the machine. Also, the commander who organizes the guide and charges from the inside, charges from the ground. And also, all professions are very important. And we even train so that in case of something, one could replace each other because anything can happen at war, and the task needs to be performed. 
In general, everything is much simpler. The driver mechanic has to understand what he is driving on and what the engine itself is made of, transmission and so on, so that he does not see the car for the first time and says, well, I don't know what's going on here. That is, the commander needs such a quality as what he would do in stressful situations. That is, you started working with the machine gun and the counter battery starts working on you. How does it relate to this? Because the commander has a lot to depend on. That is, to leave, not to leave, to continue working. How many hours do you have for this? That's the plan. The guide in the gunnery should work as much as possible with the motors of his hands, because there is a lot to spin around the site, and he should already understand where his hand is pulling and what he needs to spin. The loader is also responsible for the shells of the charges. He should understand the third and fourth charge, so that he does not get confused. Well, he is considered a loader, he should be strong. And the fifth loader is, let's say, such a profession in the calculation of the saw. This is the help from the ground. If we have a machine gunner from the ground somewhere in a trench or in a dugout, then he helps to carry these charges to the saw and helps to charge the machine gun itself in the saw. Yes, of course, this is one of the reasons because the same topography goes like the side of the world. For example, it is necessary to put a gun on the compass or the commander's mathematics. He constantly receives coordinates of the target and, for example, more or less somewhere. And he just has to calculate everything quickly and transfer the commands to the guide, so that the guide, as a matter of fact, is more quickly guided to another character and is ready to work. This knowledge block is called the artillery minimum. That is, it does not matter whether you are a mortar or you are one of the crew of the saw, or you are on a trailer gun, you have to understand the topography. That is, you have to navigate the terrain, almost find the north by the clock, for example, you know, the most important block is, of course, the work with the gun. But the basic knowledge should be all. This is the basis of the troops, I believe. We have lectures, of course, and very qualified lecturers, mentors. So the personnel is completely, no matter what role he has in the gun. He is engaged in this artillery minimum, this knowledge is checked. A friend of mine said the law about interchangeability. In order for people to be interchangeable, they need to give this knowledge to everyone. You understand? That is why knowledge from mathematics or topography is important. Everyone knows how to put the compass, how to navigate the gun, how to work with the gun. So that everyone is interchangeable. Well, yes, the mortar has calibers of 60 mm, 82 mm, 120 mm, but we mostly use the 120th caliber because it is probably the most effective for the military purpose. Well, there are 240 mm mortars, but they are for the Russians. That is, you know, in general, we do not have this, but we work mostly with the 122nd, because we work with it. Because at first there was nothing to do with it at all. Yes, of course. But these are, first of all, fictitious names. For example, this mortar is called... How is it called? Bobber? Marinka or something like that. Marichka. Well, it happens, of course. There are a number of reasons why they may not explode. Either the explosives are bad, or the soil is wet, or the shell has been lying in the warehouse for 30 to 40 years, and it has already boiled there. 
Well, it got wet a few times, dried out, something else, something is wrong with the powders. Well, it works a lot, or this, or that, or that, or that. You need to understand that the powders that we wind up, or explosives, or shells, they are 30 to 40 minutes, 50 years old. That is, they are two times older than me. Well, they may not work, it happens. This is called abortion. Yes. This is a very funny situation when you do not know. You throw a mine, close your ear and wait for it to shoot. And the mine does not come out. And what if the mortar pushes a little, does not want to come out? Well, then what? The abortion is done. The mine is taken from the barrel. In this process, the whole calculation is taken into account, so to speak. That is here is a mortar, it weighs 275 kilograms with a plate. But you need to unify the barrel, throw the barrel on the shoulder, swing it, and the commander of the machine gun catches the mine. Yes, it happens, it happens often. When, for example, I was a senior officer, I was put on this post, I corrected and controlled the fire. And there were situations when I had three mortar shells, and for the first time I gave the command to shoot abortion. I give another command to shoot abortion. I don't understand, I give the command to another gun abortion, abortion. And I'm like, damn, what to do? It was necessary to quickly look for the shells, and that's it. But the fact is that the shell parties are different, and they mix, and the gun does not shoot. These calculations can no longer break the back, swing the mortar. We joke when we pull out the mine from the commander, what is there, a boy or a girl? A boy or a girl, yes. If the soldier did not work, and there is no shell, then it is a boy. And if he worked, and there is a shell, then it is a girl. Such is the situation. We did not have this. We did not have... Well, if it hits, we also squeeze it out, put the shell in. Yes, we take a jar, as we were told, you need to take a jar. And so you push it back into the tower, and that's it. And catch something there. No, it did not happen. The tanks worked for us. Well, that is, we were not far from our infantry. They threw 82. The tanks worked for us. Well, we just had such weather then, that, well, there were rains, and the shells of the tank were just lying next to each other, they did not reach. Well, we had to, well, with the infantry, we did not enter the close combat. That is, you know, if the mortar fighters have to enter the close combat with the enemy infantry, then something is wrong here. You know, in the reasonable books, there is a whole instruction on how to take a fight, a fight, more precisely, by calculation. You need to put a mortar on the field of direct fire. Well, if it's a close fight, it's more likely that the mortar's calculation will die. It depends on the command. Due to the fact that the cannon of 1987, the first shot is not scary, it is uncomfortable. Because you do not know what it will be, how it will be. And then it's already very fun. There was also a situation that we were coming, we were shooting as if without a cannon, but not on full powder. That is, we come to the position and they tell us, well, get the mortar, now we will shoot from the mortar. And we are like, what mortar? They say, well, there is no mortar, but you need to work. Well, we looked at each other in the calculation, like, well, come on, come on. That's it, loaded the cannon, everything is ready for us. I look at the law, I was the commander of the cannon, he was the gunner. I say yes, he says yes, and come on, bam. That's it, it was something. Well, well the right ear, yes. What do you say? Not much, but you can feel it, the right ear is constantly, because it is closer to the explosion itself. Are there any problems with hearing all artillerymen, that is, as they say, a shot from a cannon or a mortar, regardless of whether you have a protection system in your ear, so micro-contusion comes out? 
And it is very important to understand this when you go into artillery, that your hearing will fall 100 p percent and so on, your back will hurt, but you need to perform a combat task, so you have to accept it and endure it. I often ask such questions. Of course, at first, when they came, it was interesting, you write, and then there is no time for them, you don't want to waste, you just throw it away. You know it depends on the pace of work. Sometimes you just throw 30 mines, you don't have time to sign them. But you scream at the postman. It's not about that, we are postmen, so to speak and we need to send this mail to the addresses. And from who? From everyone. From everyone, yes. To run, to fall somewhere in a hole, to look for a depression in the ground or in the relief, and immediately fall. You will not run away from mines, but also from artillery shells, I think. You know, there is a radius of exact impact, it depends on the type of system that works, it can be 20 to 30 to minus 40 meters, where fragments or fragments go directly above the ground. That is even the position of the silhouette, as low as possible may not help, so you need to lie down right away and roll somewhere. Although in fact, you will not hear your mind. Yes, you know your mind when the sound of the exit works for you, and you hear a whistle, and at some point the whistle just stops, and you understand. It's probably yours. Well, let's open the gate. Yes, let's open the gate. The disadvantage is probably that we are the closest to everyone. Well, the advantage is that we are more mobile than such a big howitzer. We have the opportunity to make an incursion, go out, work quickly on the target, get together and shoot with our heels, so to speak. Yes, I also believe that the main advantage is that the mortar can be thrown behind all sorts of hills, that is, thrown directly into the dugout, which can be difficult for gun artillery. The mortar is more likely to hit the infantry in the fortifications. Of course, there are many disadvantages. The disadvantage is that you are standing 275 kilograms away from the enemy for 2 kilometers, and they can hit you from the systems available to them, such as a GS self-propelled gun, and so on. Of course, there is a desire to listen to music. We are all the same people. Each of us loves music. Probably someone loves classics, someone loves rap. I don't know. Well, I also like this classic. I love listening and meditating. After the war, you give more advantage to our musicians. You listen to our Ukrainian music. It is very important. It is nice to shoot at them. You can't smoke near gunpowder. Yes, you can't even smoke near a cannon. This is a safety technique. This is not hazard. This is a safety technique. We have all the hazards associated with the safety technique. Well, yes. Or with the purity of the cannon, so that it is clean and everything works well. Yes, you can be in the mud, but the cannon must be clean. Like an armed P arsenal carriers. Like an armed P arsenal carriers, yes. It happens that even the plate on the mortar is very dirty, no matter how dirty you are. You get it out, wipe it, so that the mechanism works better. Everyone has his own gun in his account. That is, he is responsible for it. That is, this is his account. Sometimes it is very nice when everything is clean, everything is straight out. And in some cases it is dirty, something else. This is your weapon, you need to work with it. There are bullets in the cannon. Kurzenko. Yes, probably the higher forces. You know they probably exist because we are sitting here in front of you now. 
As one of the American instructors explained to us, unfortunately, it is not so that if the artillery is covered, a plane will not fly, a helicopter will not fly, and you can only leave. And so there are only birds that see that something is happening. But it is important to understand that artillery covers itself. That is according to the hierarchy of calibers. If 82s work and start working on them, they can be protected by 120 mortars. If they start at 120, then they are already protecting the guns. That is, we cover ourselves. Well, and the guns in such a scheme are only to protect Berzenko. Well, depending on who works with which weapon. And if you have a larger caliber, and of course you have a larger weapon with which you work. And if someone gets in the way ahead, then just the older brother leaves, and that's it. And he covers it. Yes. He covers himself. It is worth understanding. Yes, depending on the caliber. If this is some kind of mine, then yes, from 82 everything will be fine. The house is not impressive. But you know, for example, there are mines in which there is a stop mine mode. That is, the mine pierces the roof, or the wall, or something else where it hits. And, of course, it explodes with a bang. That is, it may not even save. Everything needs to be understood. Well, I said that you need to lower the silhouette as much as possible. This is the best protection, that's all. People too. This is optical intelligence. That is when, for example, at the front, at Nero on the first line, you can see the enemy's equipment. There are also bucilists who can adjust the fire. That is, they can give angles. This is very, very important for artillery. And all this is transferred to the artillery itself. The artillery is already starting to work on the enemy. That is, yes, there is such a thing. Well, yes, of course, I performed such a function. That is, from the observation point, they transfer a directional curve to the target that needs to be hit. You need two observation points so that you get the coordinates of this target. And our optical intelligence calculates these coordinates. That is, this is complex work. This work requires special training. That is mathematics. Yes, mathematics, mathematics in the first place. Yes, of course, there is also a program that helps a lot. That is, without it, it would be difficult. Yes, you can. And the mortar can be from the sound of the grad and when it flies, lie down. But, as it seems to me, our lawyer taught this to the infantry. We were in the infantry and felt all the different approaches well. And the mortar whistles, the grad whistles, and it flies in a different way. Let's put it this way, in the infantry of the law, we went through all types of shells that could fly out at us. We then, the first rotation, we went out and here the mines begin, the barrel begins, the fences begin. And you are like, wow, this is, yes, this is the first rotation, it's cool, it's fun. But you will never hear your own. Yes. That is, when close you know you hear the sound of a shell, and when it hits nearby, the sound just disappears. If the mine flies under a different directional angle, you hear it whistling, and where it falls. If it flies to you, you will not even hear it well. For a maximum of half a second, you can already hear how it flies. Well, and the wind also affects this, because if it is against the wind, then the sound of both the exit and the sound of the flight itself it immediately moves away, goes to the other side. And you just... There were also such situations when the mortar missiles were spinning something in the enemy on these whistles. And there was no sound at all, and there was a shot and an explosion. And you just bang, a shot, and that's it. That is, the enemy learns, the enemy adapts. You understand that this is... But we will win anyway. You need to understand that when you work and hear the exits of grad or the exits of enemy mortars, it is better for you to be more careful in order to manage to fall for the first time. In the number of ammunition, in the number of ammunition,
and in the number of barrels, calibers. You know, this whole war is like this for me. They gave you a machine gun. A large caliber machine gun begins to work for you. They gave you a machine gun. A large caliber machine gun begins to work for you. They gave you a machine gun. A large caliber machine gun begins to work for you. Well, this is all quantity. I believe in quantity. In some directions, we can be won by quality. But it seems to me that this is the quantity of a lot of things. Yes, the enemy adapts very quickly. That is, you need to outperform him. And it all depends on the task. The task is to defend or the task is to attack. If the task is to defend, then we have a little bit of a loss in our power. And if you attack, then you need a counter battery, you need to work on them. And this is much more. You need more crews, much more vehicles, much more ammunition to be able to work. That set still exists. Yes, we need fresh forces. Come to us. We will be glad to see everyone. We need your help. Mobile add-ons. Mobile add-ons, you know, we have a Cropiva system. Of course they help. Well, there are some more, but with more topography. But Cropiva is the main one. You know, to come, if there is no compass, then you need to put a mortar on the compass. Or a cannon. Yes, or a cannon. While the commander puts the compass in the main direction and tells you the direction. You set it up, there is a compass on the phone at most. You set it up, read what you need and set it up. Of course, you know it's very nice. Technology, the development of technology, it speeds up our work in general. That it, instead of counting on Kravchenko's tables, we just enter the coordinates of the targets. And we develop our position. That is, we get a compass, a sight. It speeds up the work. But you have to be prepared to be able to do it. Wait, wait. We also have such a program called the Blue One. It helps us a lot. In order not to transfer coordinates by radio, we use this program. And we are not on the air at all. Well, and so everyone needs to understand that if this program does not work, and you can only work on this program, then you will not get anything. That's why we all learn art minimum. With a ruler, with a map, like the old days. There is a whole device for calculation. Where are you shooting from? It worked. Add them at least. Something new is interesting every day. Well, I had one such interesting story. We went to work. We work, and here I have a loader. He takes it. Carriage for loading. We start working. There is a shot. The messenger rises. He hits him in the eye with such a fankel. And it's on his head. I say it's okay, okay, okay. We continue to work. That's it. He has already laid off this messenger. We have already worked with the messenger. Everything was fine. You know, there are countless stories. That is, you are at war. When I came to war, so many of these stories were given to the platoon of civil specialists. Someone went somewhere. Someone dug a trench for himself. And the exit from the trench is Brustov, in the direction of ours. I say, why? He says, the district defense. I say, what are you doing? We had such a situation that reporters also came to shoot a report. And we asked them, when will the report come out? They say, well, when they shoot from this position, we will definitely put it out. Well, the next day we came to that position. And we, so to speak, covered it. We write to the reporters. That's it, maybe you're in the right position. No, I'm not. Because now there is shooting everywhere. And in close combat, artillery fights more. That is, with a large caliber, one cannon comes out, then another. And they fight with a large caliber. Who is faster, who is more cunning. 
because in artillery you need to think a lot. In general, during the war, you have to understand that you have to deceive the enemy to make him swallow your bait and punish him for this and more artillery war now. Well, you understand that we value each of our infantrymen. Therefore, it is very unrealistic to push some flanks without artillery and to go somewhere in the counter-offensive. First, you need to tighten a specific place along which you will try to pass. And then our infantry will come in. Because I say that all our personnel are valuable. Well, there is one rule in artillery. Disassembly of shells is not a thing of the past. In fact, they say we throw a mine and wherever it flies, it's our business. You also need to understand that there is such an artillery luck. If it falls from you, you shoot. It flies wherever it wants. In general, luck is everything. Yes, that's all. Let's do more. Yes, we can smoke now.